it was said at the first leading with Lee. And I really just thought about it. I was like, yeah, I was there. Um, leaders are not intimidated by others because they know how to put, like, oh, God, I gotta make sure I say it right. Um, they, the, the best professional leaders know how to put others in a position to be dominant without letting it intimidate them. Yep. And I just thought that, that was so huge. Like you had this whole teaching, this whole point about how, you know, you can see somebody else's best self and it not intimidate you about your best self. And I just thought that that was so powerful. I was like, this is overcoming insecurity at its finest. Yes, that's going in there. So I've, I've had it in my notes since then. Hi everybody, Lee Scott here. Thank you for watching and are listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee, where we talk about life, leadership, and legacy. I want to help you unleash your capacity and level of leadership. I'm so excited that you are here. But before I talk more about this week's episode, if you have not done it yet, go and subscribe to Leading with Lee on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. I'm so excited that you are here because I am continuing my conversation about what we have done so far here on Leading With Lee, with my title being Five Years Later, Part Two. And I'm super excited that you're gonna hear from some folks that I've been wanting to come on Leading for a while. Some of them you've heard before, but some of them you have not heard yet on Leading. And we're gonna get three different perspectives today about Leading With Lee, and I'm super excited for you to hear from them. So without further ado, I wanna give my first guest that I'm talking to today about this experience of Lean with Lee, the event, and how it impacted her. Her name is Megan Pinkney, and she is a familiar face here on Leading with Lee. She actually came on our first season of Leading and was one of my first guests, and I'm super grateful to her for that, and we talk about that. But she also played a pivotal role in Leading at the beginning. She actually was one of the panelists that I had be a part of with this thing we had called Leader Tips Live. And Megan actually spoke, but she also was involved in the event. So I'm not going to spoil anything else for you what she has to say. So check out this interview and conversation that I had with Megan Pick. Watch this. So so Megan, thank you for coming on. It's, it's so great to see you and be with you to talk about um, just the first opportunity that we did leading all those years ago. It's crazy. It's been five years. Isn't that wild? Oh, congratulations. I mean, I, look, look, when you said, look, immediately we said, Greg, I thought about the Tyrese meme of him oh. going off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I thank you. I appreciate you saying oh, that. Please, but, sure. but, but sincerely, um, what, what do you remember? Well, first of all, let's not talk about that. But what's going on in your world and in your life right now? I know it's, you haven't been on leading in a while, but what's going on in, in Megan's world? Yes. So I'm still thriving in my business, a consulting business, Joseph's Ministry. Uh, we're still helping individuals and businesses get to their next level. That's what we do. Um, fun fact, we will be turning 10 years old this year. So wow. that just blows my mind um, that we get to do this and we get to partner with people and businesses um, along their journey. So that's um, continue to thrive and just continue to learn each and every day. Um, life has been great, you know, of course, many ups and downs, but all in all, um, it, it's just been fun. So I'm just, I choose to take the positive outlook and just continue to smile and make lemonade out of lemons. Right, right, <laughs> right. I mean, we all, you know, need to take that perspective, especially in, in our day and time. Um, so let's jump right in, like, Megan, you are a critical aspect of the story of leading because uh, we have met like the year or so before and we hit it off and you have just been such a constant <laughs> brand in my life, but also a constant person of wisdom and insight. And so I want to just kind of reflect with you a little bit about that day. Like, what are some of your memories of that day and some of the things that happened or transpired that like you can, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this happened or or some of the things that you had a perspective about from 2019, which is wild to think about. I know, that's crazy. One of the things, um, I remember talking about leadership 
Um, but I remember with all of the speakers that were there, um, you were very intentional about not telling us um, what you were going to be speaking about. But we spoke and then you spoke and it was like everything meshed together, like everything yeah. lined upon line. I mean, it was just like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> we were saying the exact same thing. So that was pretty cool because we didn't practice. Nobody shared notes. Nobody did anything. But we were all in alignment with the vision that you gave us. So that was such a cool part. Um, also, I remember uh, with the many people that were present um, during that, that conference, that time, yeah. um, the people were really encouraged. The people were really um, motivated to move forward with their vision. Um, and yeah. you led the vision so well. And I can look back on some videos and some pictures. We were all so young. <laughs> I mean, it was five years ago, but it was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> we all look so young. And, um, I mean, nuggets were being dropped. And it's just such an encouragement um, to be a part of leading for so many years and just to see the growth and to see where we are today. So, <laughs> fun yeah, time. I mean, I mean, you're absolutely telling the truth. I mean, I look back now. It's so funny because I was looking at something. Uh, in the last few days, obviously you saw my post on social media about it. Yeah, and just just me thinking back to that time and just what was all going on in my life at the time, it's wild to me to realize, like, oh wow, that was a different time. You know, I, I shared in the first episode of the season just where I was in my career. I mean, I mean, I hadn't even finished my degree yet at ORU, right. like. I was still in a process of like fighting with the university to even allow me to take the course that I needed to complete. Like unbeknownst to me, like it literally, this stuff was going on at that time. And I look back now and I'm like, it is amazing how much life has happened. Right. And, and I mean, quite frankly, just God's grace. Like it's yeah. been wild to me to see, like I can clearly see just, a material difference from then and now obviously you know i don't live in tulsa anymore right. there are so many other things happen i have gotten two degrees since and i, I talked about this the first episode but it's but it's like you know wow i mean even at the time were you working on your first master's at the time no 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 i finished no 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 I okay, okay 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 because yeah. i know because i know i know since then haven't you gotten a second master since then i could be wrong no i'm close we about to we about to wrap it up Right. So, so you, like, there were, there were so many other things happening in our lives. Just, yes. it was just, you know, going on, and 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 it was transforming and changing. Yeah. But, but that made me think too. Even for you, Megan, like, I said this before we start recording. Like, you've been such an instrumental person in the process of leading, and I'm super grateful for that because, had not you said yes to a just an idea or a dream, I don't know if leading would be where it is today. Um. So. Obviously, you know, I have a lot of gratitude for you. Um, and, and I mean, staying along that vein, like, as far as that day, like, how do you, re in reflecting, how do you think your impact or involvement probably shaped leading in, from the first event? Right. I, I, I'm a firm believer that um, not, not just with me, but people need what we have. So everybody yeah. brought their different perspective. Um, Chris, Darren, myself, even Melanie, we all have our different perspectives about the same topic, right? Um, but people need what I have because I have a unique journey. I have a unique um, outlook on certain aspects. So it was an opportunity to just be myself. And that's what I try to tell people all the time. It's like, hey, just be yourself, your unique self. Because you're going to connect with someone who needs that. I may, some people may not connect with me, but they can connect with you. Um, but if I didn't show up, the people who needed me wouldn't get it, right? They wouldn't get what they needed. Um, so, you know, I'm always encouraged, but I've learned over the years to be confident in who I am, to be confident in my journey, to be confident um, of what I have to offer, because I do believe um, that people need what I have and I need what they have. I mean, we need leading. We need this opportunity for people to grow the platform. Um, you give space to people 
um, to get interviews to people um, in various industries and in different backgrounds. I mean, you just never know who's going to come across leading on YouTube or on the multiple platforms that you're on. Um, not just here now, but years to come. I mean, another five years. You just never know. We're going to be back on this podcast and wondering like, oh my gosh, life has changed so much since yeah. then. So, no, seriously. So, I mean, you just never know. But if you don't ever show up, You'll never have the member. You'll never have that impact. Um, never leave that impact in the world. So um, I, I'm just I'm just grateful for the opportunity because you people don't have to call you to do anything. And you you asked me to be a part, and I'm I'm grateful <laughs> That's for true. that. I mean, they don't. Um, and I'm grateful for that. And I don't take it lightly. But um, you know, I, I just try to do my best in everything that I do. But I, I believe that people need what we have. So just show up. Do it in excellence and do the best that you can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be, let's be quite clear. Uh, Megan, you were so great that I was like, you know, Megan, we're about to do a podcast. Could you please come back? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm super grateful for that. Like, I mean, I mean, you know, I was talking to Kyle about this, and 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 he was telling me he was like, you know, he was just amazed by his opportunity to sit there and and listen and learn from folks who came yeah. on, right? And, and him being behind the camera, his perspective of seeing what was happening. Right. And, and it really struck me because, you know, you never know what you're saying until you hear it back, right? And, and, and so let's talk about that too, because Megan, like, you legitimately were my first actual interview on later. <laughs> so it's like an honor for me to literally have you back on because like, this is a cinema, mo like a huge moment in the, 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 the anthology of yeah. leading, like in, in leading story, you have been so critical to like the start. And so what are some of your thoughts or some of your reflections about when leading became a podcast? Like what are some of the things that you remember from that conversation? We had it at your house. I know. <laughs> I think I was more nervous than you because I'm like, what to, what do I expect? I don't know. Right. I've never been on a podcast. Well, I right. think I had been on a podcast before, but um, definitely not in my house. But, um, you know, I, I, you made it fun. You know, you and Kyle, you know, we, we joked, we laughed. Um, it was very raw. I mean, we it wasn't nothing rehearsed. Um, so it was just right off the cuff. <laughs> um, so that usually makes the best interviews. But um, it was fun, you know, looking back on it, it was really fun. And it really opened me up to um, liking the idea of interviewing. Even in my business, um, mm. I have an opportunity to interview my clients. So it's actually bringing me great joy to interview people, to get that raw response and just to get that first answer right off the top of your head, you know, mm. things like that. And just to help people um <clears throat> get outside of themselves yeah. and and get out of their heads but just um bring it to life it is it, it, it's different when you start and you know uh, it's hard to explain but when you start interviewing people it of course it's different when you are the interviewer versus the interviewee <laughs> yeah However, yeah um from that day i was it was it was exciting again i was probably more, more nervous than you were but um at the end of the day it's actually Turned out really, really well. I mean, we got a lot of comments, a lot of views yes. um, from that interview. Uh, I probably need to go back and listen to it myself. Um, <laughs> but um, it was fun. Yeah. You know, we might need to share. I might need to share it again. Let's, but um, I think it, so. <laughs> it's out there. Hey, hey, it, look, if you listen to watch this right now, go back in the feed. Yes. You can find Megan's interview in season one. I, I mean, yes. I mean, clearly, because. Uh, you know, it's so funny we're talking about this because Amanda, my fiance, was, and I haven't shared this on here, so I guess I just let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious to me now that I'm saying it out loud. Um, not the engagement, but, you know, that I haven't yeah. talked about it yet. Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to talk about it at a proper time. Anyways, uh, just in reflection, like, she was telling me that she literally just recently went back and started watching the first season of Bleeding. Wow. And this is prior to us knowing each other, right? And yeah. she was like, 
it's amazing how I can watch these interviews. And she was like, I was, I'm learning stuff from all the people that you had on there, all the people that said yes to you. She was like, I don't think you realize how you have grown as a person, but also I can see where you were in your life. Yeah. And so it's super encouraging to hear you say that, Megan, because a lot of times we need those moments where we can look back and reflect on where we were. Because yeah. I think we underestimate our own growth. And and yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately, especially at this point in my life where, again, you know, there's a lot of things changing, right? There's 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 personal things happening. I mean, there are things that are happening at work. There are things that are happening. Even me thinking about some other educational stuff and things that I want to do, mm -hmm. um, some goals and dreams. These things are evolving and changing. And sometimes we need to go back and look at how far we've come so that we can uh, have a better appreciation yes. for the processes in our story. And I think one of the things that is encouraging to me and just hearing you is that like, oh no, like where we were then is a different place, but where we were is, is somewhere that we can actually look back and say, okay, you know, I've, I've made it, you know, I've, I've gotten this far and, it, and, and there's no finish line, obviously, mm -hmm. but, but, but that's definitely one a, a reality, I think. Absolutely. I mean, five, we know, is the number of grace. Right. So it's like, take what you've learned up until this point, up until today, up until this year, this fifth year. And it's like, okay, let this be a launching pad for you to continue to do what you do, do it in excellence, but take it to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> because that that so you look back not to be like oh i want to go back but no it's like wow <laughs> that's how far i've come i you know i still you know you can look at it in several different ways man i still have a long way to go mm -hmm. in certain areas or like wow yeah. i've really grown in this area um, i'm really proud of myself but all in all taking that moment to stop and celebrate. And that's something that I am learning to do even in my own personal life. You know, you can get victories and it's like, yes, that was great. You won that victory or you, you know, you accomplished that goal, you whatever, whatever. Um, but if we don't stop and celebrate, you know, we can sometimes get, um, feel some type of way of somebody else doesn't celebrate us, but you didn't stop to celebrate yourself. So I'm proud of you for stopping to celebrate um, this milestone um, with leading with Lee because um, it's important to do so. And I tell people this all the time. Make sure you celebrate yourself. Uh, literally. I mean, I accomplished something um, by surprise this week. And I actually took myself out yesterday um, to celebrate by myself. I'm like, nope, I don't want anybody to come. I went by myself and I celebrated because I'm like, you know what? Let me just take this moment and just really reflect and be in the moment. And not just be like, oh, okay, that was good. Move on. Next. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, hey, no, I want I want to really remember um the accomplishment and how hard hard the hard work it took and the dedication and whatever the case may be. Um, but just really celebrate. So I'm proud of you for doing that. Right, thank you, Megan. Um I I I'm in my mind, I'm like, please don't get emotional. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's real. I mean, you know. I appreciate you saying that. I think, um, you know, this to be true. I mean, you, you, you as a as an entrepreneur, as someone who started things and built things, you know, it takes a lot of courage to just do something that nobody asked you to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody asked us to do what we do. Exactly. We just had the courage and had the inkling and That's had good. the desire to do something that we felt like was in us, and said, "Hey, I'm just gonna go after it. I'm gonna try this thing. I don't know if it's gonna work." But right. I'm going to do it. And so that that's super encouraging to hear that. I got one more question for you. Absolutely. Um, and then I can get you out of here. And thank you for coming on. I mean. Of course. <laughs> that, that, again, there will be no leading without you, Megan. I, oh. I'm sincerely. Like, there, there will be no leading. leading without you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> that is true. I mean, it, it does have my name in it. <laughs> but, but you get my point. My point is, is, is that there there. There would be it would not be what it is today if it wasn't for folks who said yes in yeah. moments where um, it mattered. And so, and my last question, and I asked, I'm asking everyone this: um, what what is what is some advice you would give to people 
um, who are looking to start something or looking to like actually step out because because you and I can look back and, and we we've gotten a little bit further right I'm five years into doing leading you're 10 years mm -hmm. into doing Joseph's ministry right like mm -hmm. and 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 other stuff that's happened in your life right what is some advice you say to people like hey this is something that I would just simply give to you in order for you to move forward man um you know I, I'm not trying to take it from Nike but just do it um, because I can look back, I can tell you so many times, so many examples where, man, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to impact these people that came behind me. If I didn't start Joseph's ministry 10 years ago, um, where would all the clients be that we've helped? Right. Of course, I mean, they could have went to someone else, but they wouldn't receive the experience that they have that we give them in Joseph's ministry. Wow. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? And it's like, hey, if you want to write a book and you haven't done it yet, um, think about the people who have not read your story. They're not being impacted. They're not being um, uh, delivered. They're not being encouraged. They're not moving forward in their um, purpose and vision because you didn't do, you are a vital part of that. And like yep. I said earlier, people need what you have. You may not think that, but I'm. T let me encourage you. <laughs> People need what you have. Yeah. And my encouragement is to just do it. If nobody else is shocked about the the great things that have been going on in my life, is me. I'm shocked. All I did was show up. Yeah. I said, well, let, well, let's. I had an idea. Well, let's let's put it to work. I mean, if it fails, pivot. We don't fail. We pivot. Yeah. <laughs> We pivot, yeah. we move on to something else. But I mean, you'll never know if you don't try. So my encouragement to people is people need what you have. So just show up and do what you do. Do what you do like nobody else can. So that's my encouragement. Well, well, Megan, uh, you know, we're going to have to bring you back on for a full episode at this point. I mean, I mean, <laughs> we have no other choice at this point. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I call you in the next year, you know, you know why. Uh, I, Megan, I appreciate you so much. And, and, and I'm grateful that you've been a part of the story of Lee with Lee. You are, you are part of the multiverse, as they say. <laughs> uh, you are uh, one of the main characters of, of this story. And so thank awesome. you for coming on, my friend. Absolutely. Congratulations at the end. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, Megan is one of the best leaders I know, and I'm super inspired by her and everything that she has accomplished through her engineering career and her businesses and everything that she does. So I'm so happy that she came on to share a little bit more about what's going on in her life and also just her reflections on what happened that day at Leading with Lee. But this next guest, there will be no Leading with Lee without him. I talk about him all the time here on Leading, and it's so great to have him come on and have him share about his perspective of that day. Without further ado, I will not give him too much of a great introduction. I'll just let you hear from my one of my best friends in the whole wide world, and truly is somebody who was instrumental in not only recording the first Leading with Lee event in 2019, but also shooting pretty much all of the first season of Leading with Lee in 2020. And I'm super grateful to him and thankful for our friendship. Please listen to and be encouraged and motivated by my dear friend, Kyle Stirk. Watch this. Well, Kyle, my dear friend, how are you doing first and foremost? I'm doing good. Yeah, doing good. good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Well, thank you for doing this. Um, as you know, uh, Leading's anniversary was on February 9th, and you were so instrumental in that, that event. And so I wanted to talk to you and, and get your perspective about the day. Um, First of all, like what's going on in your world? What's happening with you right now? And what are certain things that's been going on the last five years since uh, yeah. you were involved in the first day of leading? Well, um, when we first started, I was just learning how to do video and how to, you know, use that in my in my career and build a career off of that. Um, <clears throat> and five years ago, I was filming weddings. Um, now I am a director of a post-production department for a video production company. That's a, you know, multi-million dollar 
video production company based here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, humble brag. A humble brag, a little bit, yeah. But I love it. You know, we get to have a full team of creative writers, cinematographers, editors, VFX um, artists, and we get to tell story. And it's so much fun. We get to help our clients, you know, tell their brand story. We get to create some really incredible work for them. And it's a it's a really, really incredible little place. I mean, you know, you're one of my best friends. So uh, I'm excited for everything that you do and uh, all the opportunities that you have in front of you, especially nowadays with everything that's going on. And uh, a detail you didn't mention uh, that I guess I'm going to share on here is <laughs> in the last one, you, you did meet Cam and get married. So, uh, yes. you know, uh, you were single as a prank. Well, were you all dating then? Uh, I might have been dating, but yeah i hadn't but that's neither here nor there that that happened maybe less than a year after we started leading with lee wow when i started dating camille so 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 you're welcome uh yeah we're coming up on three years of marriage in march that's wild which is a whole other conversation for another day and and we might have to bring you all back on to talk about you all story uh but but bro thank you for coming on um one of the things i wanted to talk to you about again, as I stated earlier, is what were your memories from that day? Like, what were some of the things that were going through your mind as you and I probably were having way more conversations than most people realized that we were having? We were talking probably months prior to us actually airing leading. Um, What were some of your memories from the first event? And I mean, I'm going to give you a moment to not just talk about the first event, but just the first year of of capturing leading i just would love to hear your perspective about that yeah um well i remember you know i had all my video equipment ready and you know getting everything prepared inside of that little room the lighting wasn't really really incredible but you know we made the most of it Mm -hmm. Uh, and i remember having my video camera uh ready to pan because i know that you're quite the um maneuverable talker you when you're when you're coaching and when you're about leadership, but uh, I just remember like getting everything set up and we really didn't know what it was going to look like. We didn't know who's going to show up. We had a general like RSVP. Mm -hmm. um, And I don't remember how big the library space that we had was, but it probably wasn't more than like a hundred seats maybe. Um, And, and the fact that almost every seat was completely filled in that first event. Yeah. It was incredible. It was really, really incredible. And I remember getting everything set up and, you know, I had to like, I had to actually lift up my camera because of the amount of people that were in that room. And I had to make sure I was covering um, everyone's head in order to get a good angle on you. But I remember just people walking in and uh, being really, really excited for you. And I just remember being blown away by the number of people that actually showed up. Which was cool. I, I, listen, you and me both, because I, I didn't have low expectations. I think I just kind of didn't know what to expect. I, I mean, you, you and I have talked about this for so many years, but like, it's it's one of those things where when you're trying something new, you don't know if people will be receptive to it. I mean, there there there's so many unknowns, right, in that conversation, that reality. And so I I am super grateful for your contribution and you even believing in me and being like, you know, bro, I'm going to capture this particular moment in your life that is actually significant and important and mm-hmm. be a part of that part of your story. Um, yeah. Kind of staying there a little bit. I, I, do you remember the conversation we ended up having about turning it into a podcast or do you have any recollection of us having that conversation? I don't think I do. I just remember us being really, really encouraged by the turnout. And, you know, I've always known you, Lee, and you're a big dreamer. And I also like to believe in my friends. And I think it probably was, you know, after the event, you kind of just said, like, you know, hey, like, what if we turn this into, like, actually something? Yeah. And, um, so I don't remember exactly the conversation, um, but I do recall us starting to dream a little bit bigger, which was 
which was uh, a big undertaking to kind of like think about what it could turn into. Yeah, I would agree with that because I think for me, looking back, I think I was thinking a lot about, um, you know, I kept, you know, I did like one or two more events or whatever. And I think we talked, if I'm not going to say, we talked for months about, about like it possibly becoming a podcast or something like that. Because mm-hmm. I, I think for me, Kyle, you and I talk all the time. So, so we were talking all the time. And so I think for me, it was a bit of like, man, I got to figure out how to be more impactful and execute more in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think in some way, it may have just been a, 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 a and I, both words are trying to remember, but it may have just been like by happenstance, we were like, maybe we should do a podcast or something like that. Mm-hmm. And unbeknownst to us, 2020 happens. Uh, yeah. You and I have been having conversations for months about doing a podcast or doing something related to that. And mm-hmm. we we're also able to use the content that you capture from the first leading to be right. the first episode, right. which was so clutch. You know, like, I started on second base, at least. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and and I'm super grateful for that. Yeah, I mean, that, that one event probably turned into... I don't know, eight to 12 separate little videos that we put out um, over the course of a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, so I just, I remember that being like, you know, an event that held a lot of fruit because of that. Yeah. So I think we did that with a couple other events as well, where we just yeah. took little snippets of like, you know, 45 seconds to 90 seconds of, of, you know, some of the things that you were saying and turning that into separate little videos. Yeah. 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 We, we did. And, um, I'm super grateful, eternally grateful to you because Mm -hmm. I mean, you were very instrumental in shaping the voice of leading whether you realize it or not. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, Mm -hmm. and with that being said, how do you think, or how do you feel about being involved in shaping or affecting what leading is today? Like, how does that make you feel? What are, what are some of the thoughts that come to your mind in, in, in realizing how much you invested yeah. in Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I'm really grateful too. It taught me a lot about video production and, you know, thrown into the fire and something like that too. You know, it's it's uh, it was cool to be able to learn how to do things really quickly. Um, I remember you know, uh, t- turning your apartment complex or p- your apartment uh, building into like a little studio. <laughs> yes, literally. Trying to make it look good. And that apartment complex was, was not so great. No, and it so was not. Turning that, turning that room into a space that looked good. I mean, that was a challenge and it was, oh, yeah. it was, it was cool to try to like, you know, make it work best for, you know, for something that people will be watching and looking at every day. Like, um, so, I remember just being really, really grateful for that. I also just really think it's important to just, you know, support your people. Like if, if the people that you love have dreams and passions, like, and you have a tool that can help them establish that and build it, um, then, you know, if you really believe in your friends, then that's the way to do it. And we did that from the, from the get go. Uh, I think we, you know, after that first event, we kind of just talked about it and said, like, you know, I mean, this could turn into something. And, um, you know, I had access to some video equipment, um, some of my own, some of my uh, previous employer, and we were able to, you know, make something out of it almost every week for, gosh, I mean, how many weeks did we end up trying to film things? Yeah. Probably like, I mean, we ended up doing things, you know, we probably had over like 20 or 30 separate events where we were filming things um and it was cool i mean you know being behind a camera um you you get to hear a whole lot of um of of life story and of Mm -hmm. um little bits of you know um you know wisdom that people have learned over the years and so i remember some of those first conversations i remember having like evan Duguid on the show and talking about be heard and how incredible it is to be able to serve his community and 
what he's learned in leadership. Like I got to sit there behind the camera for 20 or 30 times and learn small little bits of information that I've applied into my own life um, and into my own leadership. And so that's invaluable for me. Um, another notable one that I remember was talking with Celia from, um, from uh, TTC, was it TTC? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just being able to hear her, you know, what she's learned over the years in, in leadership and in, um, you know, dealing with people in public relations. And so really, honestly, like it taught me a whole lot about video production. It taught me a whole lot about editing and filming, but it also taught me a whole lot personally about how to lead myself, how to lead others. Um, and the small little snippets of, of wisdom that I've been able to take in my professional and personal path. Yeah. I, that's such a great response because in my mind, you know, I think we were, it was symbiotic in a lot of ways. Cause I mean, it, it forced me to grow in my thought process about sharing about leadership, but I think also too, it gave you opportunity to try things with mm -hmm. me, right? I mean, we, we tried different stuff um, in that first year of, of doing leading in this format and you know, along the way, I, you know, I always will ask you questions and be like, hey, bro, uh, what do you think about this? Or I'm thinking about buying this thing. Like, what is your opinion? Literally before we start recording, I was asking you about something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, beca because I think it has challenged us to grow as people and grow as leaders and grow in our ability to uh, understand what we do. And I'm super excited for what is ahead i know for me personally but just i i think i mean you could tell me if i'm wrong i mean it gave you great b-roll to use to leverage right uh, it forced your career and some of the things that you're trying to accomplish in your own life it gave you opportunity to use that content to be like hey you know i captured 20 episodes of, a, of an individual that i love this like my brother to me and here's that content right yeah. these are this is how i lit stuff this is how i did things and that was huge, I think, for not just for you, but for me, because it actually gave me an opportunity to hone in on my craft. And you were taking time out of your schedule, like, right? Like we were, we were literally spending a lot of time and I couldn't pay you. Like, Kyle, you did not have to do that, but you did it because you loved me and you believed in me. And I'm eternally grateful to you for that. Um, I got two more questions and, and then, you know, we'll obviously talk about other stuff because we're, we actually are in real life, our friends, uh, <laughs> but, but what is your hope, um, for the future of leading? I know this seems like an unusual question, but what are some of the things that you believe that I can do with this space or just believe that? could be done with this platform to try to teach people our life leadership and legacy. Yeah. Um, you know, from the get go, I think you've always brought on people that you were inspired by. Um, some of the first couple episodes um, were people that you just saw were doing big things in their community. Um, you know, you know, whether that was actually affecting people or if it was affecting systems or whatever it was. Um, I saw you bringing in people that loved and served people. And in doing so, they were excellent leaders, which was, you know, a nice little, um, you know, a little uh, side benefit to it. But <clears throat> I think my hope with Leading with Lee is that, you know, uh, that you continue to, you know, do what you're doing to inspire and to lead people so that there's other people that invite you in to their space to say, Hey, this guy is impacting people, you know, showing them how to lead, you know, not just by words, but by action. Um, and so my hope for relating with Lee is that, you know, this grows out of the leading with Lee bubble and becomes something that is, you know, impacting other people um, in their professional and in their own leading um, leadership experiences. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Um, I, I got one more question for you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. And we'll end 
this and obviously we got to talk my boy and i love you mm-hmm. uh uh my last question for you is what piece of advice would you give people uh who are looking to start something um i mean you and i can truly say if 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 people when if people listen and watch this episode we can truly say we have seen what happens when you start something right i mean i mean we we would not us sitting here talking about it five years later is a powerful testament to just two people having a conversation and say hey let's go let's do it right what what advice would you give to people if who are looking into starting something or trying to um get something off the ground my probably biggest piece of advice is consistency um you know from the very very beginning you said that you wanted to do this and you didn't let up on it you continue to do this weekly um for you know what is now five seasons of leading with lee and we'll have another you know five to ten of it you know um even if you feel discouraged or if you feel um like you're not enough like the best piece of advice to keep going is just to believe in yourself and to be consistent in what you want to do um you know leading with lee is a good testament of that um you know what we were doing with video wise was a good testament to that because you know you know consistently doing this for multiple weeks and months and years that was a resume item for me on you know for my resume that i applied for my current job and you know that was a big piece of the puzzle was just you know this was something that taught me new things um and so inconsistency you know there is there's learning there's you know there's there's bits of information that you just figure out along the way um you know whether through researching it or whether through trial by error um you end up finding new things about yourself about your craft about your passion just by doing them every day. It's like practicing, you know, I'm a musician. If I don't sit there and practice, you know, scales or chords or whatever it might be, you know, I'm gonna lose it a little bit. But if I'm able to sit there and practice, be consistent with it, that is the one, you know, element to my growth um, is just that I might be consistent. Yep, yep. I mean, Kyle, that's a great answer. Well, you know, I love you, bro. and. There is no leading without you. And every time I get a chance on here, anytime I'm talking about the journey of how we got to this point, I'm always talking about you and the contribution that you made. I mean, you you truly, bro, like laid an incredible foundation that I can stand on and have courage to keep going forward. So um, the reason why I keep doing leading is, is obviously because I'm passionate about it. But one of the reasons why I keep doing leading I want to make you proud and Mm. so I work hard I study I look at information because I'm like I want Kyle to to if he just so happened to stumble on YouTube (laughs) or or as we listen to podcasts, he's like what Lee is talking about these days outside of our conversations on the normal on a regular basis but no I wonder what he's doing so I, I appreciate it bro and I love you man I love you too Lee I mean, what did you expect? You could have, should have not expected anything less from Kyle. He was going to be incredible in his sharing. And I promise you, his perspective was so critical to Lean with Lee because he captured all these unique moments. I mean, every angle, every shot, everything he did was super important to the life of Lean with Lee. And I would not be here sitting here today, especially in this capacity, if it wasn't for Kyle. And so we've heard from two different perspectives. We heard from somebody who was on our panel, who actually was front of camera, but and but then you heard from somebody who was behind the camera and our friends, Kyle, and I'm super grateful that they both came on. But we got one more guest, and I hope that you'll stick around, and we'll be right back after the break. And we are back. I'm so grateful that you're still here, and I'm super excited to share this next guest. This next guest someone who I truly, truly consider a dear friend of mine. She was really helpful on that day of leading with Lee. And I don't want to spoil the surprise. She has some things to share on 
her interview with me, and I hope that you're inspired by her. Please welcome to Leading with Lee, my friend, Melody Dunlap. Watch this. So, Melody, thank you for coming on. It's so exciting to have you on and just reflecting on just Leading with Lee and all that has happened in the five years of Lee and the significant role that you played in the first event of leading in February of 2018. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Five years. How five for five years? Like, how about I, I mean, that? literally. <laughs> I mean, literally. But, but, but. That's amazing. First of all, before I get too far into asking about the date, what's been happening in your world since 2019 and how are you doing and how are you moving through life nowadays? Wow, a lot has happened in five years. I mean, wow. <laughs> I feel like we are definitely different people. Um, oh, absolutely. In the, in the best way, absolutely. Um, I want to tell you this. Leading with Lee actually really impacted my life. I'm going to tell you why. Um, that first time that we met, I know I'm really going to answer your question, I promise. <laughs> that first time that we met at the coffee shop, to just talk about and discuss like, hey, I have this idea, I have this pitch. I didn't really know what it was. I was just like, okay, I'm on board for whatever Lee Scott is doing because he's a genius. So yes, sign me up. You know, it was kind of one of those things. Um, and so he did not able to say these things. This is really how I feel. <laughs> so I came and, uh, and I honestly, I really discovered that I have a knack and a love for emceeing, like hosting wow. and, you know, just being like the, the go-between person in a program, because normally I'm either very much behind the scenes, like administrative, event coordinating, doing media, writing, all those kinds of things that are very like unseen, but very important lifeblood of the organization things. Or I'm on stage singing. Like I don't often be on stage talking, you know, get to be on stage talking. And so, um, so the fact that you asked me to host was like, Really? You don't want me to sing something? You don't want me to <laughs> write, administrate, coordinate? No, who to host? Like it was just, it was like you saw that, and you know, just was like, yeah, no, I, I believe you would do great with this, and it was so much fun. Like it was just, you know, obviously it was a simple event, library, um, but it really it pushed me into that. So I say all that to say, I am actually going to be starting a podcast very soon. And I'm very yes! excited about it now. I was not at first because God told me to do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> we've been, you know, we've been wrestling a little bit on it, but I've, I've embraced it now. So I'm excited about what this next thing is because um, it's leading into a whole lot of other things that I've, I've been working on. And 2019 was when I started writing my book. Yeah. And I finished writing my book at the end of last year. So I'm going to publish it this year. Um, and it's it's on the topic of overcoming insecurity, which is what's leading about podcasts and all these different things coming together, music, all the, all the things. So I'm thoroughly excited to be here with you today commemorating five years because this is really like commemorating five years of me becoming something new too. Wow. Uh, Mel, <laughs> do you know how much I want to act up right now? Like, I am so excited for you. Do you like, first of all... <laughs> That is so exciting. Let me tell you something. One of the things that I, I truly believe, like, and I've noticed in the conversations that I've been having with Kyle and even with, with Megan, it, it, is, it is a reminder that sometimes the things that you're doing is bigger than you. Like, you don't, you don't realize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't realize the impact or the, the tentacles of that. If, if we would just take the moment to be like, okay, what I'm doing is not just about now. It's about all the other things that possibly yeah. will happen as a result of me saying, I'm going to try something. So, Mel, I am so excited for you to do this. And plus, <laughs> you have the best production person in the world to do it for you because I know Josh is about to kill on the production <laughs> side of this thing. Like, I can't wait to see the content. Like, I'm so excited to just see it. Are, are you so doing visual and audio? audio? <laughs> what did she say? Are you doing visual and audio? That is that is the plan. At first, we're going to start out with having audio and then using the visual just as clips to post in, like post in post. So that is that's the plan for right now. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. I did yeah. not expect this. I am <laughs> so excited. 
Jeez. This okay. is why I love you because you just champion other people's dreams. Can I tell you something else? Yes. I have I have a quote by you in my book. Yes. Really? Yes. It is a quote by you. And it was said at the first leading with Lee. And I really just thought about it. I was like, yeah, I was there. Um, leaders are not intimidated by others because they know how to put, like, oh, God, I got to make sure I say it right. Um, they, the, the best professional leaders know how to put others in a position to be dominant without letting it intimidate them. Yep. And I just thought that, that was so huge. Like, you had this whole teaching, this whole point about how, you know, you can see somebody else's best self and it not intimidate you about your best self. And I just thought that that was so powerful. I was like, this is overcoming insecurity at its finest. Yes, that's going in there. So I've, I've had it in my notes since then. I feel like I just don't need to ask any more questions. I'm so happy right now. Like, I mean, forgive me. I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> you made my whole day, Mel. Wow, you made my whole day. Okay. I mean, I mean that that lets me know it's well worth it because, again, you know, it's it's people getting the opportunity to step out and do things that they need to do. And I, I still, it's it's so interesting to bring up the quote. I still believe that with all my heart today. Because if if we don't have leaders that are intentional in that way concerning that issue, we will consistently have this problem where no one will be fulfilled because they, they assume that I have to outdo you or outdo all these different things. And now, there is a school of thought in our culture that is very, very big on the idea that, okay, we, you know, there has to be losers. Everybody can't win. And I understand that sentiment, like I understand that there is a there's a unhealthy obsession with people not understanding how failure works. But but I think we need to reframe the conversation. Right. We need to reframe it in understanding that. Me being happy for you is not a loss for me. Right. Right. I both can exist. At the Simultaneously. Same I can. <laughs> I can be excited for you. I forgot that it does this thing that I put up two things. Yeah. <laughs> Balloons. I'm on my iPad. Hey, <laughs> what's up? Hey, we celebrate five years. We're celebrating. <laughs> right. But as you were saying. But, uh, but yeah, it, it is definitely um, something to realize that I can love this. And that doesn't mean that I hate that. Just, just that statement alone. Because. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. We were talking about the comment section. Everybody knows about the comment section. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you go, there are people in the comment section that are haters. <laughs> Their Absolutely. sole purpose in life is just to hate on whatever the content is. It could be, I saw the most adorable video of this little three-year-old girl reciting a poem. And because she's standing there in like a onesie, her parents, or like, you know, people were commenting like, oh, her parents shouldn't have her out of here with her thighs out on Instagram, and this is child pornography. I was like, what? She's wearing a, what? Like a, a one-piece little snap at the bottom. Like, she's little. She might be three. Maybe that's a little old for wearing a onesie. But she was standing up. She looked grown enough, and she was talking clear. <laughs> she was adorable. I was like, this is cute. Y'all need to chill. You know, but, like, you can love something, and that doesn't mean that you hate something else. Like, there's always the, you know, LeBron versus Michael Jordan. Like, can we just appreciate who LeBron James is in this era without hating who Michael Jordan was in the previous era? Like, can we just love both? And can we enjoy both Batman and Spider-Man? Like, do we have to be like DC versus Marvel? Like, everything in a versus. I went to see both movies, personally. And I enjoyed them both. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> That's why they both broke the box office. Right. So, you know, I can champion you. I can be excited and yeah. be a patron of everything Leading with Lee and all things Lee Scott Enterprises for the past five plus years. And you can also <laughs> be a patron right. and a support for the next five years of everything Melody Faith. Like, it can happen. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's uh, that's not hard. But 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 right. I think... It shouldn't be. Point, <laughs> to you, it shouldn't be. Is it. But to your point, it, we, we have to... In continue to strive to do that for people yeah. i mean i mean my, my questions are about to go out the window i mean you, you <laughs> I, I think it needed to be hijacked in that way because my next question for you is what do you remember from that day specifically you talked about 
just being at the meetings, but just what were some of the things that you noticed? Because not only were you involved, but you got to observe. Like, what were you seeing happening in the audience? What were you seeing happening during different parts of the event? Well, I remember, so I actually, I took a couple of pictures that day and was just, you know, kind of being a behind the scenes person that I normally am. And I remember being so um, excited for you growing in something that had really been like a brainchild for a long time. So to see it come to fruition, like I've had those moments before when, you know, I've been thinking about doing this concert and then I get there and it's like, oh my gosh, there are really people here. And they really want to hear me. Like, you know, and it can be ner like nervous energy, but also it's, it's excitement. It's like, wow, they're finally going to get to hear what I've been preparing. And for you, I know it was years in the making before you ever set foot on a leading with the stage, you know, and then the podcast just stick to the next level because you don't have to actually be in the room in order to yeah. get this. Um, and you can be more free and like there's no time constraints and no building constraints, all that kind of stuff. So just seeing it go literally, I mean, not to be churchy, but you know how we are, like from glory to glory. Like it oh, really because I think that was a huge thing. I saw people taking notes. I saw people, you know, listening intently, asking questions. One thing that I have learned at events, like I've been at enough, <laughs> especially like church events or corporate events. It is hard to get people to ask questions sometimes. You say, right, we're going to open up the floor for questions. Crickets. Pin drop. <laughs> like, like, okay, so we're going to keep talking awkwardly until someone has a question. <laughs> yep. And so I thought that our way of facilitating questions was really great because we had some that were turned in beforehand, but then also people raised their hand on the spot. I thought that was great. And you know what? I found my notes from when we had our meeting at the coffee shop. Like, I literally have it right here. That's crazy. So crazy. I was looking at it and I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. Like, you know, this is how many attendees we're expecting. Right. Here's the schedule. Here's when we're going to break for refreshments and yeah. everybody's bio at the bottom, you know. So wow. just the, the buzz of putting it together and then seeing it actually, like, come to fruition was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and also it exceeding our expectation. I mean, Let's be clear, Mel. If I just got it out of my system, I was gonna be good. You know what I mean? Because, because, because I've been thinking about it for so long, right? And 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 I don't often tell the story on here, but I don't think most most people know that literally for two years prior to actually doing the Leading with Lee event, I had been trying to figure out how do I talk about this thing that I'm trying to understand even in my own life right like i don't think anybody has made it you know one thing i talked about at the first leading was you know i've always said leaders are learners right we're always learning we're always growing and we're always evolving but most people don't realize or know that i was about to start a, a blog the year before and it was going to be called lion wanderer which which i had done some research about kind of what my name meant and stuff like that and i've found that Lee was a variation of Lion or, you know, because Lee and Leo, all those things are very similar. And then Scott, my last name in Gaelic means eloquent speaker or wanderer. So I was like, oh, let me yeah, um, make this cool, you know, uh, blog or whatever and talk about, you know, just life, right. right? But but let's be clear about something. It didn't happen because in the process of me about about to start doing it some things start happening in my life i remember having a, a conversation with a friend of mine and he was like man i think you need to take some, a step back and really seek the lord about like what is it that you're supposed to do and cuz i was i was like so frustrated by the fact that like hey i'm just trying to move in a, a different way and i didn't really know or feel comfortable in some ways uh, about certain things that was going on in my heart and my mind and what I started realizing was like, hey, you actually need to understand like this process is is you needed to go through that process. Like I said, people don't realize I sat on content for a full year before I ever did leading. Before we ever before we ever had a conversation, before we ever did, I was sitting there with stuff that I had wrote down. I have notes on my phone from 2017. 2016, 2017 of stuff that I was going to talk about. Never put it out. Never talked about it. Never Even if you had never told me that right now, I would have known that. Because 
the thing is, like, it takes time for things to sit in gestation before they're birthed out. Like, you, yeah. you have to allow. And, yes. and as creatives, as speakers, as performers, like, anything you are putting out, if you're a business person, like, you have to give yourself grace and the time <laughs> to just let it sit, let it marinate. Because you might come, there are things that I've written and I thought it was just the most profound at the time. And then a year later, I go like, I'm looking, I'm like, what in the world? Yep. <laughs> you know, or maybe not even picking it apart like it's foolish, but yep. it's like, yeah, there's, I've grown since this. Like, mm -hmm. this is, this is one level, but now I'm at a different, now I don't want to say it like this, I want to say it like this. And when you let it come to full fruition, like I believe, you know, obviously, like I said, glory to glory, as we continue to grow and as we continue to be learners as leaders, then there's always going to be another level. Yeah, yeah. Um, to learn and, and want to teach. That's so insightful. And, and I think it's encouraging. And, you know, the first thing that came to my mind, Mel, was a lot of times when we write our time stamps of moments in our lives. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was sharing this with... Uh, Megan, um, we were talking, and I said to her, you know, again, you know, I let the cat out of the bag in, this episode, in that episode, but I'm going to say the same thing to you. Uh, I was saying to her that literally, my fiance Amanda was literally saying to me, she was like, I went back and watched some of the first season. She said, I can see, I can literally see where you were in your life based on what you were talking about. And I think it's important to, even to your point, appreciate that because sometimes we need to be able to reflect on how far we have come and appreciate yeah. it because th there is something about knowing where you were and and actually taking the time to see okay there's some things that i've grown in there's some things that i'm, I'm more experienced in there's some things i'm more wise in there's some things that if i actually took the time to recognize them I will see the benefits of all the things that I'm living in right now. And now I can be more level-headed. Now I can be more precise. Now I can be more thoughtful. Now I can actually be more, you know, I actually don't have to let them have it. <laughs> right. You know I mean? yes. but, 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 but that's because of, of that maturity. I, I think that's such a great insight, man. So, such great insight. Um, I got one more question for you, and then I'm going to get you yeah. out of here. Okay. <laughs> um, because this has been fun for me. It's been fun for me going down memory lane and talking to people and engaging. But um, what piece of advice would you give to folks who, and I've asked everybody this, what piece of advice would you give to folks who are thinking about starting something? Because you watch me start something, right? You are about to start something new. You have started a lot of great things, Mel. I've known you for a long time. You started a lot of phenomenal things, but you're about to start something else that's great. What what piece of advice would you give to people about starting and actually pursuing a dream that they might have? Yeah. Oh, great question. I, you know, people always say, uh, "What would you tell your younger self?" Or what's something that you wish you were taught? Um, like I said, the the grace is really the biggest thing. Yeah, it's woven into every other lesson. Um, and with that, you know, it even says in Nehemiah in, in the Bible, like the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Like, don't despise small beginnings because you have to start somewhere. And if you don't start, you will ensure the fact that you will not finish. Like, if you don't wow. take step one, you are guaranteed to never hit the goal. <laughs> if you don't start, you know, so the worst that can happen is that you start and stop you know, or pick it back up later or whatever, but that's where that grace comes in. But if yeah. you start, then you have just boosted your chances. You have just increased, not just by taking a risk and starting, but you've wow. increased your probability of reaching a goal because you started, like you've made progress toward a goal. Uh, I think about those surveys that you do and it actually, I love when it shows the progress bar at the bottom <laughs> because I'm, sometimes I'm impatient with those. I'm like, okay, you the point. Yes, five, all right, seven. Uh, this was a three, whatever, you know, or if you're taking an online test or something like that, it'll show you the progress bar. And sometimes it can be discouraging when you've answered 10 questions already and that progress bar has only moved this much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
how many questions are on this test and you don't see all of them at one time so you don't know yeah and so I, I feel i like that is the image in my mind uh, when it comes to starting these big projects that i'm i'm seeing now coming to fruition um my husband and i have a company called jmd productions doing media and marketing tools and you know administrative solutions for individuals mm -hmm. and businesses and yes, so uh, a little shameless plug right there but <laughs> i say that to say um we first had the the brainchild of this idea in 2016 so this is wow. eight years ago um we had just gotten married it's crazy we just celebrated our eighth anniversary so that tells you like uh, we just got married 2016 he had told me about this idea when we were dating and I was like, man, that'd be really great. I wonder if there's something that I do that we could put together with it. And then when we actually got married, it was like, okay, let's, I think there's something to this. We didn't actually incorporate <laughs> and make it official until 2019. So it was like three years wow. of us kind of doing the business, using the name. Yeah, this logo looks cool. Ah, no, scrap that. Let's do this this way. We opened an Instagram account. We didn't post anything for like... <laughs> eight months a year i don't know um we post a reel and then we post anything because it's like we don't have any continuity oh we need a website you know just figuring out the fine fine tooth code of, of going through everything and finding out the details so like what do we want to do who is our target market why do we want to do it this way should we change our pricing now it looks like the market in this area has changed you know and there's always going to be things like that that change and obviously our business will grow and change again we're in a different city now than we were when we first started so there's a lot of variables all the time but one thing that has remained consistent is the vision like we were able to keep the same vision that we started with and we've seen it grow it hasn't gone away it's just grown and now there are branches off of it in different directions that we never would have imagined we never would have discovered what our true purpose was in that vision for the business if we hadn't started in 2016. like if we waited to start we wouldn't be where we are right now like we had our highest grossing year as a business in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic because wow. we were able to start with no LLC, with no money, <laughs> fresh newlyweds, trying to figure out how do we start a business? Like, but if we hadn't started in 2016, just like pretending and playing around, we wouldn't have been ready to actually incorporate in 2019. And we would not have had like a significant year in the midst of a recession, literally in our society, you know? So I'll just say, give yourself grace. Don't be afraid to start, but when you do start, just know that you're that much closer to your goal. Well, Melody, you know, <laughs> I didn't disappoint. I think you made my whole day. Uh, uh, I so appreciate yeah, I you. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I, I so appreciate you coming on, and I'm so excited for for uh, this podcast that's about to come, oh and my God. people get to hear, and people get to be inspired by, like, I'm super excited to have people hear what you have to say and listen if you need me to promote your podcast on leading i will because same likewise you gonna be a guest on there too don't play <laughs> so so you already know the answer was yes before you even asked <laughs> all right mel much love my sister listen to the next five years let's hey, go let's go let's go well, that wraps it up here. I'm super grateful for all of them coming on and everybody that was involved in that day. And I didn't get a chance to interview everybody that was involved, but I'm super thankful for Melody and Megan and Kyle and even our friends who I did not get a chance to have come on, our friends Darren Applegate and Chris Harvey and Joy Tolliver and anybody else that was involved or engaged with us in trying to prepare for that day, Akila Rushing, all these people, I'm super grateful to them for what they did. Uh, Brianna Thompson, and I, I'm thankful for so many folks, all of my friends and folks who just gave me their time, gave me their resources, just said, hey, I'm going to come out and support you. Everybody that showed up, everybody that said yes, everybody that said, hey, I possibly can't do this, but I will support you by pushing it on social media. I want to say thank you for your contribution because without you, I wouldn't be sitting here today five years later and and i'm so grateful for every guest every individual that said yes to coming on i mean there's numerous of guests that have come on to leading with lee over the years and i'm super thankful for them and so i'm super excited that you get to have got to see this journey over the last five years but i hope that you'll still be here over the next five i look forward to seeing you next time 
here on Leading with Lee. Much love, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching and or listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. If you have not done it yet, subscribe on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. If you want to get more information and connect with me, visit me at www.leascott.com or follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lee A. Scott II or Lee A. Scott the second. So thank you for watching. Much love and let's get started.